Today's going to be a big session. Today's going to be a big session. I get this weird um, ring in my left ear and, and uh, it does, it's not there always, but uh, it just started just now. And it's, it always means that there's a, there's a lot of information in the field. So I don't know who just joined on or what's going to happen, but it's, uh, it's going to be a big one. There she is. Hey, Briar. Hey, Briar. Well done. Huge, uh, huge shift. Uh, I mean, it is a pre-frame, Vicky, but it's not one that's um, untrue. It's just what happens. So huge. Well done. By the way, big shout outs to Briar. We were just working on the certification call and been a year since she'd rung her, her, her mom and uh, she went out there and did a bit of work with me and then got on the phone and made it happen, which is pretty amazing. So well done. Life changing. Good for you. Life changing. You did it. I was happy to, to be able to be a part of that creation. So very, very cool. And so remember, there's no reason why you're creating what you choose to create. And I think when you allow yourself to get to that, that there's no reason because you could already have it. There, there will be aspects and parts of you that get disappointed because their whole orientation or their whole way that they orient to the world is that if I have this, then I'll be complete. Who, who feels parts of them sometimes when, you know, well, I, if I can already have it, what's my purpose? What's my purpose if I already have it? However, can you see that those aspects and parts are, are showing their cards? They don't actually want it. They just want to be in this never-ending search to try to get it. Does that make sense? Like sometimes people say, but Chris, if I already felt abundant, why would I go out and make money? And you're like, exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but what would I do then, you know, or what would happen then? And, and, and all of their truth pops out. Does that make sense? It's like that you, you actually realize that they, they were never um, committed to the end result. They were committed to struggling to pretend to try to get it. Just think about that for a second. And they go, oh, but what would I do if I was already healthy now? Like, what would I, you know? And it makes you, makes you wonder, doesn't it? You go, well, okay, are you really committed to the end result or committed to the struggle? Are you really committed to the end result or the struggle? So if, if you have an aspect or a part of you that gets worried about having it now, that aspect or part of you was never committed to the end result. It was committed to the struggle, committed to chasing it, committed to pretending, committed to pretending that that's what you wanted. Does that make sense? Oh, I want to, I want to be abundant. Okay, cool. You can be abundant now, <gasps> but then what would I do? Oh, well, you said you wanted abundance and you, it's a really beautiful thing. So just remember that, that everything that we're here to create, everything we're going for, it, it's just a fun game. It's just a fun game because you already have it. You already are it. You're simply uh, the creative spirit choosing to have a limited perspective of this universe, this one song, and so that you can experience it. But you already are all of it. You already are all of it. Therefore, we're just choosing to create different flavors of that which we are because it's, it's much easier to feel a, a sense of thrill and freedom when you're on the back of a motorbike it's just easier. Yeah, you could, you could feel that same thrill sitting in meditation. You could find that same thrill from standing up in front of an audience and of 10,000 people, of uh, buying a new property. You can, you can find it in many different ways. Does that make sense? You can find the, the true end result in many ways. It's just you deciding how you want to feel that end result. It's not saying you couldn't feel it now. It's saying, well, what flavors of it do I want? You know, well, how, how, how many different ways do I want to experience it? What do I want to create? What I can already experience joy. And so how do I get more of it? What things increase the joy? How do I find more of this? How do I create more? And we must remember that is the only time you're coming from true abundance when you're in true creation is when you already accept you have it. When you already accept you could have it. Does that make sense? You already accept you could have it right now. What I find with a lot of us, we have two perspectives, two perspectives. One perspective is our genius, our super conscious perspective. Another is a victim perspective. Most of us don't like to, to call ourselves victims. I would never call myself a victim, but I have a victim perspective. So victim, you can insert powerless 
victim, powerless. And what I mean by victim is giving your power to someone else. Does that make sense? You're, you're a victim to their circumstances or their conditions and not just someone else, something else. So if someone can only feel successful if they make um, $100 million, where's the power? It's in the money. If someone can only feel safety if they own their own home and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah where's the power? And all of that, you see? So the question to, for you to understand is, is where's the power? That lets you know if your power being powerless does that make sense? If you're being powerless, you're less your power. That means you're a victim to that thing that has the power. Type in a yes if you get it. I'm not saying you're a victim in everything. I'm not saying you're a victim in everything. I'm saying you have a victim perspective. And that perspective is a powerless perspective. True? A powerless perspective. And so when we go into the victim perspective in a second, I want you to, to acknowledge that this perspective is where the power is somewhere else. This government can give or take away my happiness. This food, this thing, this condition, that, that's where the power is. Does that make sense? That's where the power, the power is there. If I have this, Chris, then I can be safe. If I have this, then I can be happy. Then powerless, given the power away. And, and one of the things I want you to do is to take the power back. Take the power back because in order for you to be powerless, you had to give your power away. You, you had to give it away. And maybe you gave it away as a child and maybe you, you didn't consciously give it away, but, but right now you have a choice to keep giving it away. So anytime you're in the victim orientation, it comes along with a belief that says, I can't have that now. See, victim and powerlessness is when you can't have it now. If you can't have it now, then you're a victim, you're powerless. Make sense? If I have this, I'll feel abundant. If my kid just stops doing this, a lot of parents give their power to their kids. If my kid just listened to me or, or stopped doing this or blah, 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 where's the power? The power is given away. It's given away. That's the problem. That's a problem orientation. You can have it now. You can have a kid that's not listening to you, that's doing all these sort of things, and you can still feel happy. You can still choose, choose happiness while having a circumstance that's unwanted. It's fine. It's fine that it's the unwanted circumstance. You can want to create a masterpiece, be staring at a blank page and still feel happy about it. See, we don't have to take our emotions and apply it to our creation. Really own this and write it down. Your creations are not you. You are not what you're creating. You're not your body. You're not your relationships. You're not your money. You're not your art. You're not your kids. You're not your husband or wife. You're not your any of that. You're not that. You're not that. So you don't have to change you because the creation's not right. Does that make sense? If the creation's not right, it doesn't mean that you have to feel bad about it. We don't have to feel bad just because the creation isn't where we want it to be. Does that make sense? We don't have to go, oh, because, because I've got a blank page, it's not where I want it to be. I have to feel bad. It's, it's, you know, because my kid's on drugs, I have, to, I have to give myself all of this amazing bad emotions. Well, what, what, how does that change the result over there? It doesn't. You know? So you, you get to feel as you feel, and then, and then you're, you're creating what you want to create. Do you see how it doesn't change it? You see how it doesn't change it? It's just a condition that we decided that we have to then feel bad, you see? You know, and so you get to be it and you get to witness the creation turning into what you want, but you're not it. You're not it. You're the super conscious aspect. And so our, our lifetime uh, has, been, has been just distorted where we've been told we're this body. We've been told we're our creation. We've been told we're our skills, our talents. We've been told we're our, how we're, we are a certain way and that, that it matters and that we should feel bad if it's like this and good if it's like this. And, and really we've just given all of our power to other things. And so today I want you to view, we're going to view the difference between uh, your powerless and powerful orientation. Okay. So you can use whatever words you like. You can use victim and genius. You can use super conscious and ego you can use powerless and powerful. I don't mind. The, the, the difference that, that between the two is, is huge. 
but it doesn't matter which words uh, you use for each one. Then it's just your choice. Some people don't want to use the word powerful because they see it as destructive. So maybe you're going to use the word genius. Okay. Maybe you, well, I don't want to, I don't want to say victim. I don't want to say I'm a victim, but maybe you need to. Maybe you need to. Oh, I'm going to choose to say powerless. Okay, say powerless. You know. But the point is, is that there's these two ways to orientate to the world. One's as a creator. You can use the word creator if you like, right? Versus uh, created by everything else. <laughs> it's a funny way to put it. And so we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're going to view our end results from from different perspectives. So to do this, uh let's let's really let's step into into something really powerful so i want to ask you uh should we do some work hey eh? should we do some work should we, should we do some stuff the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get into a really uh a powerful choice okay if you're new to this work um you should have choices you should have them written out what you're choosing to create uh, I have my choices up here, my orientational choices. So if you don't have a choice written out yet, you can use one of the orientational choices. And so if that's you, you go, oh, crap, I don't have a choice. So here's, here's the four orientational choices that you can work on first. The first one is a healthy and supportive body or a healthy and vital body. I'm healthy and vital, something along the lines of that. The next one is I choose to live my true nature and purpose. The next one is I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. And the last one is I choose a life I love. Okay, so you can work on those first four orientations. Or if you are uh, been in the work a while and you have other choices, we can go into those. But I want everyone to choose, choose one. Okay, just one. We can only ever work on one at a time. One at a time. So has everyone chosen one? We're going to get ourselves into the correct structure. Okay, we're going to get into the correct structure. And what we're going to do is we're going to close our eyes, we're going to step in and we're going to witness that structure being true. Okay, just to get us in the right structure. And it's important to always do this because you want to be you want to be in a creative orientation of what I'm creating, not of uh, what am I trying to fix. Um. So the four are uh, healthy and vital or healthy and supportive body. Number two is live my true nature and purpose. Number three is uh, I choose to be the predominant creative force in my life. And the last one is I choose a life I love. Yeah. So th those, are, those are four really good that we call them orientational choices uh, wow, look at that. We've got over 100 of you on here now. That's pretty cool. Uh, why, when we choose, we choose to orientate with those ones because all of those are um, accessible now. Once you're living those four, you will then have other choices that you bring it into reality, but, but only once you're orientated in the right way. Okay, so we're going to set up a good structure in the universe. So the second step is we're going to step into that reality and we're going to be it and witness it to be done, okay? So to, to do that, um, what you'll do is you'll close your eyes and step into, into this structure, okay? Nice. So just close your eyes, step into this end result and just say it out loud. I choose the end result of and how does it feel? Notice how it feels. I have the end result. I choose this and it feels like. Witness it. How does it feel? Close your eyes, step into it, accept it to be true. What would it be like that this is true right now? Hmm. Hmm. So good. I love it. So this is getting the energy of the end result. So just go into it. How does it feel? How good does it feel? What's it like? Okay, great. So the third thing we want to do is we want to create structural tension. So we just want to observe and notice 
where are we where are we now compared to that okay so you want to be the predominant creative force well right now you know i'm uh, sometimes I, I get knocked out of it or i want to be living my true nature and purpose but right now i'm i'm not doing that or, or, or maybe you are to a certain extent so just notice where you are now compared to it so where where am i now where am i now compared to where i want to be and and just acknowledge it where am i now just where am i now okay I'm here. And we must remember that the current reality, uh, I'm not sure why people are putting in numbers. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> Everyone's like, I know what's coming next. Uh, is is we want to we want to just acknowledge where we are now. And, and we must remember that the current reality is is not separate to the desired reality. It's a earlier version of it. I talked to a lady this morning and she's going through a, a breakup. And this is, and this moment can feel like, oh, you know, uh, oh no, now, uh, now this thing has been broken up. I'm going backwards. However, it, it's actually forwards because, because it's an earlier version of whatever's about to come. Right? It's just an earlier version of what's about to come. But sometimes we go, oh, Chris, I'm trying to create financial abundance. And, you know, now I've lost all my money and I'm poor. I've gone backwards. Well, maybe you needed to clear space for what you're creating. You know, who knows? All as I know is that the current reality is always an earlier version of what you're creating. That's all it is. It's always that. And so sometimes the thing was in the way of what was really coming out. Right, the thing was in the way, but but to our um, human experience, we go. I really want this, but I don't want anything to break, you know, because we don't. We, I don't want anything I've got to break, and so very important. The current reality is always an earlier version of the future. Your your not having the money is the earlier version of having the money. Your not um, having confidence is an earlier version of having confidence. It's just an earlier version. Just like uh, a seed is the earlier version of the tree. They're not separate beings. It's fluid. Where does the seed stop being a seed and it start being a tree? Just like when does uh, uh, – thanks, Julie. You're awesome. Uh, when, when does hot and cold – when does cold turn into hot? Think about it. Can you precisely measure when it, it goes from cold to hot? <laughs> There'll be a scientist out here. Well, yes, there's a specific degrees Fahrenheit that is defined as hot. <laughs> but it's it, it's just it's just fluid, right? It's just it's just progression. Well, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what your current reality is, you must always acknowledge it's a simply an earlier version of what it is you're creating. Christy says cold to hot is subjective. Exactly. So is broke to rich. What is rich? It's subjective. What is broke? I'm so broke. And then you, you know, you, you go to a developing nation and they're like, you're rich. And you're like, oh, I'm broke. Think about it for a second. It, when is it hot? When is it cold? See, so it's just, it's just a, um, it, it, it's just a, a perspective. It's just an earlier version of what you're creating. That's it, right? Same. We're all rich. Anyone who's on this call and has access to Wi-Fi, we're all rich. It's game over. You, you know, we all know we can't really deny that fact. It's just we're, we're just an earlier version of what we're creating, the earlier version of what we're creating. So you must always remember that they're not separate. That's it's one structure. This will move to that. So what I want to understand is what, what is it that you believe you must do to move the current reality to the desired reality? What do you believe must happen? What do you believe you must do? What must happen for it to move? What must happen?
So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this structure from two different perspectives, okay? The first perspective we're going to look at this structure from is your powerless, victim, ego, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it the victim, okay? And we're going to view this whole situation from the viewpoint of your victim, your victim perspective, okay? And we're going to do it together as a group, okay? So what I'm going to have you do is you'll close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you're transported into the body of 100% being the victim, and you're going to look at your current reality, desired reality, and everything you need to do. And you're going to, to make sure that you then view it from that. I've got a good question to answer. Carrie says, illness is an earlier version of health. I was healthy till I was 61. I guess that was an earlier version of my, my illness. You know, both are an earlier version of uh, a life you love. Carrie, in fact, we're going in and out of what science and medical institutions would call ease and disease all the time. Is it true? We're constantly, just because we've got some symptoms that have shown up in today, it doesn't say that though, that wasn't there six months ago. So the, the always an earlier version. It has to be. It has to be. So it can be an earlier version of more sickness or and it also can be an earlier version of health. Or as we know, as you're the one creating the future, it has to be an earlier version of that. And so the version you've created now is actually just a later version of that previous condition, which you've decided was health. And so there were certain things that were done to create. Do you see that? So you've, you, you know, you've told me it went from um, health to to ill health, and now it's going to go to health. Can you see that the ill health is just a later version of what you called health? And there were certain things that happened and beliefs and structures that created that. It's all just it's all just one one thing. All I'm suggesting is that the current reality and desired reality are not separate; they're connected. I'm not saying that it's a perfect uh, earlier version. Sometimes, as you're you're building, uh, and and this is truly relevant to those. And, you know, my heart goes out to everyone in California right now and in Australia last year with, with forest fires, you know. Sometimes you're, you're building your dream home and there's a freaking forest fire, you know. Well, that forest fire is still an earlier version of what you're about to create, even though it's not what you wanted. Hmm? Everyone with me on that? Yeah. It's just an early, there's just no way to deny it's an earlier version. It's what we call time. <laughs> it's what we call time. Yeah, are you, Jessica? Yeah, it looks intense. So, uh, yeah, I love you guys if you're over there in California. It was a beautiful place to live. We loved living there. We lived, uh, we lived in Tahoe for eight months, and we lived in um, San Diego for a year and a half, and we lived in L.A. for a while too. So, yeah, so I so I know it. I know it. Okay, cool. So let's um let's get into the the perspective um of the victim. So I want you to close your eyes right now and just do it with me, okay? Just close your eyes and I want you to step into a whole perspective like literally like you're teleported into being the victim. Your powerless victim become this victim, maybe even feel it in your body of what it's like to be the powerless victim, powerless. What is it? How does it feel? And, and now that you've decided, just decide to view this as the victim. Just decide to view it, okay? It's going to be an important exercise. So just decide it. Cool. When you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and think about this structure. 
from the perspective of the victim, how do you define this end result? This end result is what? From the perspective of the victim, how do you define the end result? Unachievable, impossible. From the power of the, from the perspective of the victim, what do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe from the perspective of the victim? What do you believe you must do to get this end result? What do you believe you must change? From the power of, the, from the perspective of the, the victim, how much resistance do you have to this end result? Out of 10. Out of 10. From the victim perspective. Okay. Lots of resistance. Just feel how it feels to be in this perspective. How many of you feel kind of comfortable in this perspective? Oh, I've been here before. Hmm, some are like, yeah, I feel comfortable. Some say it's way too familiar. Yeah, well, I know this feeling, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to shift. We're going to shift. Felt like this many times. Good. Yeah, many of you, even though it doesn't feel good, does it feel like you've been there before at least? Been around the block with it. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get into the perspective of your genius, your, your super conscious, your genius of the creator, being the creator. So we'll, we'll, let, uh, we'll let this one go, hey? We'll let this one go. But it was important to view, and it's not scary. Some people here like, I can't say it. It's not scary. It's just a, it's just a viewpoint that's, uh, that's a part of you. Okay, so let's get into the, the super conscious. So what we'll do is we just want to leave that one behind, okay? Just, just let it go, wash it away. It's all good. I've got magic powers and let's just wash it away, okay? So that one's just gone. So now we're going to step in the same way, but into the, uh, into the super conscious, okay? The, the genius aspect of you. So just, just close your eyes and I'm going to get you into that place first, okay? Close your eyes and step into the place of becoming the creator, the powerful genius that you are. Just step into it and just feel it. The, what's it like to, to come from this place? And I just want you to own the fact that you're a genius. You can do it all. There you go. Well, you just got it. Feel into your heart. And I want you to access the field of your heart. Just listen to the instructions and become the super conscious. Feel into your heart, that's it. And just decide that you are the genius, the creator, super conscious creator. Okay, so now that you're this, just you're in that aspect that created it all, I created it all, open your eyes, come back to me. From this perspective, when you think about this end result, how do you define this end result? How do you define this end result? It's already mine, possible. It's too easy, effortless, just the beginning. I got this. Easy peasy, amazing. It's my purpose. How can there be anything else? Yeah. What do you believe about yourself when you're in this perspective? What do you 
What do you believe about yourself? And just look at all these amazing, uh, this amazing feedback. What do you believe you have to do or improve from this perspective? Look at everyone saying nothing, 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 nothing. Just go for it. Just be, just go for it. Be my authentic self, receive it, just be, go for it. What do you believe you have to do? How do you feel in this perspective? How much resistance is there in this perspective? Look at all the zeros and ones and nothing. Hmm. So why don't we live in this perspective all the time? Hmm. Why can't we just live in this perspective all the time? Wouldn't it be great? Because, you know, everyone gets it. If you could be in this perspective all the time, isn't creation easy? You already are it. You're there. And just, just, we'll just pause for a second, but just notice the big difference between these two perspectives, right? Like it's, it's, this is not trivial. It's not trivial, but it makes all the difference. And, and all of you can get there. I mean, it was a little bit of guiding from me, but uh, did everyone notice it, that, you know, there's 109 of you on this call and every single one of you got there? You all got there. It's not like no one could get there. I just guided you into it, felt into your heart. There you are. There it is. It's there. You already are super conscious, true? Old habits die hard, right? So it's, it's, you know, it's new. So what belief stops you living in the super conscious perspective 100% of the time? Do you really need to know how or did you just do it? What worries and fears and emotions stop you living in the super conscious perspective the whole time? Like what stops you? What, what stops you? And, and what, what does someone have to believe to create, create that resistance? You're not allowed to just reply good question. I know they're good questions. I want good answers. <laughs> Everyone's like, mm, good question. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. The answers don't have to be good. They just need to be what's true, what's present. Yeah, I think it's because you've lived the old way so long. Something terrible could happen. I've never done it before. Look at these truthful answers coming through. I'm just scared of it. It's just not how I've been before. I got no proof of it working. Yeah. If I could just create everything I wanted, what would I struggle about? How would I find struggle then? And if I wasn't struggling, what would I talk about at Christmas dinner? <laughs> what would I talk about at the hairdressers? <laughs> if I had nothing to complain about, who would I be? <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's true, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for that image, Dixie. 
<laughs> if if you could just easily create the life you love and manifest and turn thoughts into things, what would you have to what would you have to give up that you secretly on some level love? Hmm. Hmm. What would you have to give up? Are you willing to let go of who you've been to step into who you're becoming? Are you willing for everything that you've been to break, break down, not, not work out in order for you to step forward? Are you willing for it all to fall apart in order for you to recreate because the old you is holding all the old stuff together. And so as soon as you shift into something new, the old stuff will, will break. And as it breaks, it, it opens space for the new you to emerge. You know, you know, are you willing? Are you willing for it to get worse before it gets better? Not that it has to, but it might. Hmm. 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 I can hear your hmm. <laughs> Hey, that's cool, 111 of you on here. I'm only asking, are you willing? You know, I'm not, not saying that it has to. I'm just asking big questions. See, you are super conscious. I watch you guys all just, uh, just shift into it. And so I know on the other side of, of this shift is just magic, and it's so much fun. Ah. Oh. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Being on the creative edge of, of your, your truest, highest gift to be completely liberated, living from your heart, turning thoughts into things and creating magically. It's just so much fun, you know, so much fun. And it's just, it's just going there, going for it. <laughs> 